It has been the dream of many people for the eventual colonization and settlement of space, going as far as devising detailed plans for such endeavors. While beyond the capabilities of today's space programs and private space ventures, it is anticipated that space technology will evolve and advance to enable those dreams to someday become reality. Many of those plans entail the exploration and colonization of Earth's moon, Mars, and the other bodies in the solar system, and those scenarios are a well-known trope in science fiction. Beyond merely settling and living on the moon and other planets, some people even envision whole cities and industrial operations being developed as colonization expands further. However, there are even those who advocate living in space rather than on the surface of a moon or planet building upon the concept of space stations. During the mid-1970s, there were serious studies conducted on the possibility of space station concepts far larger and far more ambitious than past, present, and future space station projects. The studies resulted in the designs for massive space habitats that would essentially be cities in space and would serve as space colonies inhabited by thousands of people. In part one, one type of proposed space colony that was discussed was the Bernal Sphere, a massive spherical space habitat proposed by Gerard K. O'Neill. O'Neill proposed two designs for a Bernal Sphere, Island 1 and Island 2. As discussed in part one, during the summer of 1975, NASA and Stanford University held a 10-week conference, later known as the Summer Study. During this conference, plans for space colonization were discussed in detail, leading to studies of possible habitat designs. Three designs were proposed, the first one being the aforementioned Bernal Sphere. See part one for more about the conference and the Bernal Sphere concept. The second design is known as the Stanford Torus. The resulting design was an immense structure resembling a bicycle wheel, hence the term Torus being applied. It was to be large enough to be populated by 10,000 people, more akin to a small community. Like the Bernal Sphere discussed in part one, it would be positioned at the Earth-Moon L5 Lagrange point. See part one for a more detailed explanation of Lagrange points. The habitat would be a tube 427 feet in diameter in the shape of a wheel, slightly over a mile in diameter and about three and a half miles in circumference. People would live in the ring with the ring connected via large access tubes like spokes to a central hub which would serve as the docking location for spacecraft. The spokes would be 48 feet in diameter and would allow for the entry and exit to the living and agricultural sections in the ring. The habitat would rotate at one revolution per minute to simulate Earth gravity via centrifugal force. The interior would be illuminated with natural sunlight by a large stationary mirror positioned directly above the hub. The mirror would be inclined at a 45 degree angle to the habitat to direct sunlight onto a series of smaller mirrors that would then reflect the sunlight into the habitat's interior via a series of louvered mirrors that would allow light into the colony but also acting to block cosmic radiation. A large paddle-like structure beneath the hub would serve as the radiator carrying waste heat into space away from the colony. Even the possible use of a magnetic field in addition to the shielding of the structure itself as radiation protection was discussed in the study. Artificial gravity, despite the added complexity of a rotating habitat, would be required to simulate an Earth-like environment and to avoid long-term problems among the colonists that would be caused by living in zero G. The interior would be large enough to contain a natural Earth-like environment. The interior of the ring would be akin to a long glacial valley on Earth and meeting overhead to form a complete circle. 
The interior space would be large enough to allow for flexibility of design and a variety of views and scenery within the colony, including allowing for individuals to design their own living space. It would be divided into three residential areas with three agricultural areas between them. This would minimize the feeling of living in an artificial environment. The colony interior would also be designed large enough for areas including residential and commercial areas as well as public areas, light industry, and open spaces such as parks and transportation, along with areas for subsystems such as electrical transformers and power lines as well as water treatment. Population density would be like that of a small suburb. The large amount of sunlight available to the colonists would allow them to raise enough food for themselves on only 156 acres inside the agricultural areas of the ring. The abundance of sunlight available to the colony would also allow for processing of ore from the moon that would be sent to the colony from a lunar base. Also, see part one about a lunar colony and the mass driver concept for sending material from the moon to the colony site. Industrial operations would entail the use of solar furnaces to refine metals and other materials from lunar material. Zero-gravity material processing would be carried out in the hub section of the colony since being at the center negates the artificial gravity of the ring section. The habitat would need 10 million tons of mass with materials being extracted from the moon or from mining asteroids. As with the Bernal Sphere, materials from the moon would be launched to a mass catcher at the L2 Lagrange point and move to the L5 point for processing by the colony's industrial facility into construction materials. Construction of the colony would begin with the assembly of the hub section, then the spokes, and then the ring itself. Once enough of the ring had been completed, the rotation would be started to facilitate more construction workers and colonists arriving to begin their work building the interior spaces. In addition to industry operating on a colony producing satellites to be sent to lower Earth orbits and spacecraft, once the colony is fully operational, one major industrial process that would be carried out would be the production of materials for building new colonies. These later colonies would also be located at the L5 point along with the original colony, further advancing the colonization of space. The goal would be to have people permanently living in space, working and raising families as they would on Earth. As was the case with the Bernal Sphere, some involved with the study assumed the colony would be built and inhabited by the early years of the 21st century. However, as previously stated, this and other space colony concepts have turned out to be extremely ambitious and far beyond the capabilities of current space programs or private space ventures. As is also the case with the Bernal Sphere colony design, this is also one thing that might have been, but still has promise for the future once spaceflight capabilities and technology have advanced enough to allow such a massive project to be carried out. And in this case, science fiction would become reality and humanity would truly become a spacefaring civilization. The third design will be discussed in part three. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and check out the other videos on this channel. And always remember, when the future was cool,